Hey guys, I'm Patrick. I'm the lead editor and producer at LumaForge. And today we're gonna to be talking about collaborating with at least one other person in Adobe Premiere Pro. Now there are two different ways that you can collaborate using Premiere. The first of the two ways is using Adobe Team Projects. Now Team Projects is great when you're working with people remotely, it has version control built in, and it handles conflicts whenever you make an update here, somebody else makes an update over here, and they don't quite line up. However, Adobe Team Projects does not work super well with large amounts of data, nor does it work super well if the file paths for your media and somebody else's copy of the same media are a little bit different. You will start to run into relinking issues. But there are a lot of benefits to working with Adobe Team Projects when you're working with people who are not in the same physical space as you. The second way to collaborate is using Adobe's shared projects, which are like bins that everybody can access. Now shared projects is local collaboration, and it does require that you have some sort of shared storage like a LumaForge Jellyfish. Some of the major benefits of working with shared projects are that number one, any time that you add new media to your Jellyfish, it's suddenly available to everybody. And if you import something into a shared project, it just takes a very quick refresh for everybody to see those changes. Now, when it comes time to set up your shared projects, we do have a few recommendations. Number one is that you want to create a master project. This will be a Premiere Pro project that everyone has open at the same time. It is also the project that the shared projects will reference for their settings. So whatever settings you set in that master project is what settings your shared projects will use. Once you've created a new project, all you need to do is go into your Premiere Pro preferences for collaboration, enable project locking, give yourself a username, and then under media, you want to make sure to disable allow duplicate media during project import and enable automatically hide dependent clips. This will make sure that you don't end up with a whole lot of duplicates within any one particular shared project. You'll also want to add the project locked column to your project panel. That way you can see who has which shared project open at what point in time. Once you've got your master project set up, it's time to create your shared projects. To do that, click the new item button in the bottom right corner of your project panel and select shared project, and then give your shared project a name. Now that you've created your first shared project, you'll wanna go through and create any other shared projects that you want. Once you've created all of your shared projects, you'll want to make sure to set your master project to read only. There's a little lock icon in the bottom left corner. You'll wanna make sure to click that, save the changes that you've made, and it will turn red. This means that you are now in read only mode. Now that you're in read only, everybody can open that master project and can take control of individual shared projects. When working with shared projects, if the icon in the bottom left corner is red, that means you're in read only mode. That means you can't make any changes to that particular project, but you can still set in and out points and edit the clips from that project into a sequence that you have control over. If the lock icon is green, then you have both read and write privileges to that particular project. That means you can make any changes you want and save them by locking the project. If you wanna know who has control of a specific shared project, just look in the project locked column and you can find out whose door you need to go knock on to make sure that they'll open that thing back up. If you have a project that you've used to organize music or sound effects or anything else that you know that you're gonna to wanna to use over and over again, you can actually drag that Premiere Pro project from the finder into your master project and it will link to that project as though it were a shared project. That way, anytime that you need to use that music library, that sound effects library, or a set of graphics that you use all the time, you can simply drag those projects into the master project. So how do you think you'll use shared projects? Let us know in the comments below, and we'll talk real soon. Thanks so much.